Welcome back. We'll be looking at complex numbers today and how you multiply them while they're in polar form. So let's take a couple arbitrary complex numbers. Uh, I'm not going to use any numbers or anything this time. I'm just going to show you the general rules so that you then understand how to do it in virtually any case. Okay, we have our, the red one and the blue one. Uh, Z1, that's going to be this. And it's going to have an absolute value or length of R1 and an angle of beta. And Z2 corresponds to the blue ones. All right, so in polar form, it would take the general form like this then. Uh, we will have the uh, cosine and sine of the angle there. And this, this is going to be, of course, the imaginary component. And the same for the Z2. Okay, once we have that, what we're going to need to do then is take those and multiply them together. And it gets messy kind of quick, so have a little patience. That's why I put in the, the different colors for the angle so you can more easily keep track of what's happening. And we'll have to use the FOIL method to multiply these over, just like you would do in standard algebra, okay? Uh, it, it does get a little messy, though. Sorry about that. It's, sometimes you just can't avoid it. So here, here that comes, and you can see it, it gets really big. But we have some neat little tricks that we learned back in trigonometry. Uh, and we have the uh, addition and subtraction for sine and cosine formulas. And we're going to use those this time. And when we do that, you'll see that it gets a lot cleaner really fast. See that? All right, there it was before. We use them, and blam, it goes down to a real nice compact form. Now, if you don't remember what those are, just pause, get your formula book out, and look up those trigonometric uh, identities that allow this to happen. We won't take the time here for this because that was a, a different course. All right, once we have that, we're getting really close to being done because already at this point, you can see that, okay, ah, we're taking beta and alpha and adding them, and we're taking the lengths and we're multiplying them. So that's what this says right here. We have the lengths, the absolute value, remember, that's the length, and they're multiplied together, and that's what the absolute value is, R1 and R2. And the argument, and that it's getting less common to use the word argument for angle, but it still comes in a lot of textbooks. So the argument in the polar form, there's beta, that's one argument, here's another argument, okay? The argument for that complex number is the angle, and you just add them together. So alpha plus beta will give us a theta, and z1, the absolute value z1, and times the absolute value z2 is r2 times uh, r1, and that gives you the new length, r3. So the new z, the new z3, okay, comes from multiplying r1 and r2 together, whatever length it is, it might be 3, and it might be 4, or whatever, okay, you multiply them together, and then here, you just, for the angle, you just take whatever alpha and beta is, you put them together, the alpha plus beta, and that's your new angle, and you put it in right here. So it's really kind of simple, but in order to get that simplicity, we had to go through some kind of messy uh, algebra and a little bit of trigonometry. Just multiply them all together, collect your terms, realize that there's a, a neat little connection here through the trigonometric identities, and then you get a nice simple little uh, function to, to use or, or a formula that you can follow. Add the angles, multiply the lengths, and then you're done. So, well, I hope that helps. I know it was a, it was a little bit messy, uh, but now we have some good rules to use. All right, see you next time.